Hello everyone and welcome to ACAD 09, which is going to be an introduction to airspace and the functions of airspaces in regulating the flow of traffic and ensuring all of the many safety regulations. So let's first have a look at airspace class. In DC we use three airspace classifications. Alpha, Charlie, and Golf. So Class Alpha Airspace is IFR only. You have to have ATC clearance before entry as a pilot, and pilots have to comply with ATC instructions. As a controller, we have to separate all aircraft from each other within this. Then we have Class Charlie airspace, where we allow both IFR and VFR flight. You still require ATC clearance before entry, and aircraft have to comply with ATC instructions. However, as a controller, we need to we effectively need to separate IFR flights from everything else and VFR flights from IFR flights. However, we do not need to separate VFR flights from other VFR flights, but we would rather give traffic information or potentially provide um, advice if requested. Then we also have class Golf, which is the kind of least restrictive airspace, there is normally no controller. Um, aircraft don't need to follow instructions, etc. Um, class Alpha and Charlie are known as controlled airspace, whereas Class Golf is known as uncontrolled airspace. So let's now move on and have a look at some different airspace structures, starting with the Military Aerodrome Traffic Zone, or MAT. So when a controller is online, the MAT will take the airspace class of the airspace surrounding it, which for larger airfields tends to be Class Charlie. Where we have large aerodromes, maybe with multiple runways running in different, in multiple different directions, the mats can be enlarged. Then ATC clearance is not required to enter a mat specifically, but it may be required to enter the airspace around it, surrounding it. The mats is the domain of the tower controller when in VMC. And the aircraft within the mat should normally maintain below 250 knots indicated unless cleared specifically cleared otherwise or procedures require higher speeds, such as the initial join, which we will look at more in ACAD 10. The mat extends in this shape that you can see on the right from the surface to 3000 feet. And if there are multiple mats in very close proximity, they may be combined under one controller, which we then call a combined mat or C mat. Then one layer above the mats, we have the control zone, abbreviated to CTR. So a CTR is typically going to be class Charlie but can also be class alpha at incredibly busy airports. ATC clearance is required to enter a control zone and the control zones typically extend from the surface to about five to 7,000 feet above aerodrome level. Um, the specific number is detailed in DCP1, the DCP-15 series. Then we have a control area, which in this case is the jurisdiction of the approach controller. Normally this will be class Charlie, but could be class Alpha as well. 
A CTA will normally extend from about one or two thousand feet, or even a bit higher, um, above aerodrome level to flight level one hundred, somewhere between flight level one hundred and one five zero. We then also have some less important airspace structures at this level. We have the Terminal Control Area, or TMA, which is a lower en route control airspace, which is typically up to about flight level 200 or so. We then have the Military Operating Area, or MOA, where all of the shooting happens. Civil aircraft tend to not fly into one. Um, without explicit clearance and normally lots of paperwork. These we can effectively think of as being Class Charlie. They're not quite the same because it's this kind of tactical airspace structure, but we can think of them as being Class Charlie. Then we have the Carrier Control Area, or a CCA, which is the airspace that's around an aircraft carrier. Aircraft that are not under the carrier's control typically is kind of nicer if they don't enter a, C a CCA. And within it, carrier aircraft will have higher priority. Now let's look at the control zone or control area entry clearance. So if we have this kind of, we typically have this kind of pass details loop here. So the aircraft will give the call signs and their message will effectively be their request. So in this case, for example, if it's a control zone entry clearance, an APA radar or Hornet 1 requests zone transit. Then they're asked to pass their details. And then when passing their details, they use this ADDPAA format. So we have the aircraft type and their formation size, departure aerodrome, destination aerodrome, their current position, their altitude with the pressure setting they're on, and their request. So in this example, Hornet 1, single F-18 from Krimsk to Novo overhead Gorka, altitude 1,500 feet, Krasnodar 2, Nano Nano 2, request zone transit. And in this case, they are being instructed to remain outside controlled airspace and their join and clearance will be expected in, in about five minutes. If they are cleared to enter, that it'll be something along the lines of Hornet 1, cleared to enter the Anapa control zone and then their route and altitude and kind of any other restrictions around their flight whilst they are within the zone. So to summarize today, we looked at airspace class and controlled versus uncontrolled airspace and the different responsibilities of aircraft and controllers in Alpha, Charlie and Gulf airspace. We also had a look at some common airspace structures, including mats and sea mats, the control zones, control areas, some less important ones, and we looked a bit at entering control zones and control areas.